Thank you. Thank you. We now move to topical questions. Question number one, John Lamont. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to Scottish Borders Council's decision not to allow the Jim Clark rally to take place in 2015. Cabinet Secretary Shona well, the, the Scottish Government understands the disappointment uh, of uh, the organisers that the Jim Clark rally has been cancelled. The decision not to hold the rally in May 2015 is ultimately one for the Scottish Borders Council in consultation with planning partners. The Scottish Government are doing all we can to ensure that motorsports events, including the Jim Clark rally, can continue to take place in the future as safely as possible. John Lamont. Um, I thank the Cabinet Secretary uh, for her response. I think everybody involved wants rallying to be as safe as it can be following the tragic events earlier this year. Given the announcement last week that the rally will not go ahead in 2015 as planned, does the Cabinet Secretary believe that there has been adequate consultation between the race organisers and elected representatives before this decision was made? Cabinet Secretary. Well, first of all, I'm sure the, the Council have not taken this decision lightly, given they know the, the strength of feeling of the organisers and indeed the, the local community. It was always going to be a, a difficult decision to impart to the organisers and elected members. Um, I hope that the communication going forward uh, can be uh, improved. Uh, and I hope that the dialogue between the, the Council and the organisers will continue because what is important is that we look at what the options are going forward in terms of um, making sure that there will be a Jim Clark rally at a future date. John Lamont. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that um, further helpful response. Now, since the announcement on Friday, the organisers of the rally have been in contact with me to say that the Scottish Borders Council felt unable to discuss the possibility of a 2015 rally in closed roads, closed roads whilst the police inquiry was ongoing. Now, this is despite assurances from the Transport Minister in June that the rally could take place in 2015, provided it complied with the recommendations which, which um, would be made by the Scottish Government's Sports Safety Review Team's recommendations. Now, I understand that there is still time for a rally to be held in May 2015. 15. That certainly is, is the position of the organisers who issued a statement to that effect um, this, uh, this morning. Will the Scottish Government now intervene to facilitate discussions with the organisers, Scottish Borders Council and the police? And more specifically, would the Cabinet Secretary encourage the Lord Advocate to meet me and the race organisers with a view to issuing guidelines to allow the organisers and the Council to proceed with the planning of the 2015 event? Cabinet Secretary. Oh. I'll deal with the last point first. I'm, I'm sure the Lord Advocate would be happy to, to meet with the member uh, to uh, discuss um, issues, albeit that he may be restricted in terms of some of the elements that, that he can uh, discuss, given that um, the, the Crown will obviously receive the, the report from the, the police in due course. If I can just um, respond to the, the other points. Um, the, the member will understand that the role of ministers in uh, the Jim Clark rally is determined by the 1996 Act. Um, so there is a, a role for ministers to monitor, monitor the event at a high level um, from a public safety perspective. Uh, but, of course, it always was the case that Scottish Borders Council remain the lead authority in terms of authorising the event. Now, clearly, the Council, uh, in discussion with their uh, legal advisers, uh, when they looked at the requirement to look back and, uh, at the, the rally uh, of this year in order to plan the rally uh, next year, uh, came to the conclusion uh, that that was going to be extremely difficult while there was a live police investigation ongoing with pos possible proceedings um, from the Crown, depending on what that report uh, from the police to the Crown uh, says. Uh, so I, I can understand uh, that difficulty. It was a difficult decision for the Council to come to, but based on the advice that they have had, that was the conclusion that they have come to. Now, going forward, uh, I think it is important that uh, the communication between the Council and elected members and the organisers is good to look at what, what can be done. Uh, I know the organisers are, are, um, have uh, 
uh, are very keen to continue those discussions. I believe the Council is also, but we have to bear in mind that there is a, a live police investigation ongoing and that will take some time, as will any Crown proceedings that may or may not emer emerge from that report. But meanwhile, I'm very happy to uh, facilitate a discussion with the Lord Advocate if the Member would find that helpful. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, can the Cabinet Secretary please provide any details of the broader review of on-road sporting events, uh, including cycling, which I understand is currently being undertaken, and what impacts this might have on other summer events for 2015? Okay, well, the, the, the Motorsport uh, Safety Review uh, has reported its interim recommendations, which looked at, uh, among other things, uh, uh, the, the training required of uh, marshals and uh, those involved in the organisation uh, of, of, of events, not just the Jim, Cl Jim Clark rally, but of course the, the rally that took place in Mull and in fact any other uh, events uh, of this nature. The final report will, will come in at the end of this year, uh, but uh, it was important to get those interim uh, findings out there, not least because the Mull rally was about to take place and there were important changes that needed to be made and were made in time uh, for, for that rally. Uh, so going forward, uh, it will be important that any organisers of any event uh, will, will want to uh, look very closely at those recommendations that will come uh, by, by the end of this year and make sure that they plan and arrange uh, their, uh, their uh, event in line with those recommendations. Question two, Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether it plans to introduce legislation to ban circuses from using wild animals. Cabinet Secretary Richard Lockhead. As the Member may be aware, the Scottish Government consulted mm. earlier this year on banning the use of wild animals in travelling circuses on ethical grounds. The analysis of over 2,000 responses is currently being completed and, of course, will carefully consider all the views expressed. The Scottish Government does, however, recognise the concerns around this uh, very important issue and will look carefully at what the options might be for implementing such a ban. Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his answer. Uh, like many, I was uh, shocked to hear that two lions and three tigers um, are being wintered, as they call it, uh, in small cages in a, a farm near St Combs in the northeast of Scotland. 28 countries have already uh, implemented bans on the use of wild animals uh, in circuses, uh, according to reports. Uh, could the Cabinet Secretary um, uh, ensure uh, that we move in a, a much more progressive manner and follow their lead? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you. I very much uh, sympathise with the sentiments expressed by Kevin Stewart. I should say that two male lions and two male tigers and an elderly female tiger arrived in Fraserburgh in October 2014 at the end of the circus season. The Scottish Government officials are in close contact with Aberdeenshire Council, who are responsible for ensuring that animal welfare and public safety needs are met and that the required licence under the Dangerous Wild Animals Act 1976 uh, is in place. I uh, also understand the animals no, are not at this time attached to any particular uh, circus. However, it does raise issues and questions, as Kevin Stewart quite rightly uh, raises in Parliament today. I do want Scotland to be progressive. The fact that we are considering moving the legislation forward on the basis of ethical grounds means we have to clarify the exact legal route for doing so. And, of course, we're paying close attention to events elsewhere in the UK as well, because similar legislation is being proposed south of the border, albeit via a member's bill. So we're paying very close attention to this and we'll move as quickly as we can. Mr. Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Aberdeenshire Council claim everything is above board, and uh, I have no reason to doubt that. Unfortunately, we have uh, outdated legislation uh, in this regard. Um, I am pleased that the um, Cabinet Secretary is looking very closely at this. Could he give us an ind indication of when uh, it will be likely that uh, the uh, collation of the responses from the co consultation um, are, is completed uh, and when we can expect to see some action? Well, on learning of the animals being uh, overwintered at St Combs, uh, close to Fraserburgh, I, I did make inquiries into this issue, and of course, it has also uh, led me to urge my officials to to give me details on how we can improve the timescale of bringing forward uh, legislative action. Uh, there are, as I said before, some issues uh, that we have to look at in terms of legality, but we are doing that at the moment. The member mentions the legislation is out of date. I would again just say that. 
whilst I accept there is an issue we are looking at with regard to the use of wild animals in circuses, uh, there is also the issue around the animals in St Colmes near Fraserburgh, and there is legislation in place in terms of licensing that. So if he thinks that is out of date, I would be very interested to hear his further views. Clear Baker. Um, as a follow-on from the last question, as the Cabinet Secretary says, banning wild animals and circuses doesn't necessarily address the overwintering issue. Um, I'm glad he's had discussions with Aberdeenshire Council. I um, understand, I think he said 1976 are the regulations. Um, does he still feel those regulations are fit for purpose? Cabinet Secretary. Well, that is a good question. And as I said, this, this particular case in St Combs near Fraserburgh and the, the public concern around that does raise questions in my own mind, as, as, as it's doing with the uh, uh, colleagues and the <coughs> issues surrounding animals that could potentially be used for circuses in the future is something that arises perhaps from this. But as Kevin Stewart says, if the use of wild animals in circuses is outlawed at some point, then this incident might not have arrived in the first place. So we have to just balance that. But I certainly will have a, a look at all these regulations. Thank you. That ends topical questions. The next item of business is a statement by Michael Russell on child protection. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement.